Hello, my name is Ram Gopal. I'm a freshman at Carnegie Mellon University. This is my 15-112 term project for fall 2017. It is a circuit solver that takes in images of hand-drawn circuits, uh, places them on this grid, and then solves them. So let's look at an example of this. So let's take a hand-drawn circuit, open it. It asks us to click on the main nodes of the circuit. So uh, this particular circuit has eight different nodes, which we can click on. Once we click on them, we click continue. It asks us for the number of edges. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 edges. We click continue. It asks us to draw a rectangle the size of a circuit element. So this is about right. And we continue one more time. And now we see that the circuit is displayed on our screens. Uh, these two were wires and so was this. And that is correct. This was a voltage source. And the resistors are also positioned correctly. All right, so this is 100% accurate for this circuit. Now we can modify the values of our resistors. Uh, it's set to a default of one kilo ohm. We can also modify the default, by the way, but we can also modify the individual ones. So let's say I can make this particular 110 or this 120. Uh, we can also change the value of the voltage source. Uh, it does not necessarily have to be DC. I can make it uh, 20 volts with a radial frequency of 100 and a phase shift of 90. So it's a 90 degree phase shifted cosine wave now. I can press solve circuit. After I press solve circuit, if I click on any of the components, I'll get information about the voltages and currents, as well as a waveform showing the current against time. If I shift click on the waveform, I get voltage against time at the different nodes. If I click on it, I get it zoomed in, and it will also display the minimum and maximum. And so this is one example of how we can use this. We can also look at a few more examples. So this is another circuit. Again, it asks us to click on the main nodes, which we can do. Note that we should click on uh, nodes between elements so that it gets recognized as multiple elements, so like nodes uh, 1 and nodes 4, node 1 and node 4. Also, if we click random nodes, we can undo them, so that shouldn't be a problem. And now we continue. Number of edges, six edges in this circuit, rectangle the size of a circuit element. Uh, this is a horizontal rectangle. It should be about large enough to accommodate a voltage source, so this is a typical size. We continue once more, and again, this is correct. We can modify these values, and we can solve the circuit if we want. Again, we get information about the circuit. This is a DC circuit. Also note that we have not placed a ground in this circuit, which is why our voltages could look weird. If we want uh, our voltages to be accurate, we just place a ground over here, solve it again. And now we note that here it'll be zero and here will be minus five because we have set a ground. And so we get nice numbers. In addition to this, we can also create our own circuits on this grid. So they can be AC or DC or any form of circuits. We have resistors, capacitors, and inductors to build with. Uh, they can be of multiple frequencies, so voltage sources with uh, many different frequencies are provided. Uh, yeah, so let's say we have one with 5 volts, 5 radians. We can have one with 7 volts and 7 radians, 70 degrees phase shift. Again, we can solve all of these, get waveforms, get more information. Uh, also, one final detail is that uh, if we place elements on this grid, we can also look at their values by pressing show circuit values. We can toggle it on and off. Uh, so that is my that is the application I've created for my term project. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you.